Is Joe Biden up against Ron DeSantis in this hypothetical 2024 presidential matchup? Today on Political Access, we're going to go through each state and try to find a winner. And this was suggested to me in the comments. But this is actually a pretty typical major matchup that we possibly might see in two years. So let's get started. Safe states are over a 10 point margin, a likely 5 to 10 points lean, under 5 points and tilt 1 point or less. So how do I see this going? Well, I have to preface this by saying there is a lot that is unknown and any one of those things can sway the margins in any of these states by two or three points. So that's really the entire outcome that's unknown and would depend on what happens. If Biden is the nominee, but there's scandals and the environment is against the Democrats, then Ron DeSantis is going to do a little bit better across some of these states. However, if there ends up being no scandals, if the economy is great, if the environment favors the Democrats and the Republicans implode, that will add on a few points to some of these states to help Biden. Running mates are also a factor as well. We assume it would be Kamala Harris. She's not really that strong of a candidate. We don't know who Ron DeSantis would pick. It could be anybody at this point. So please keep that in mind as we go through these states. This is not a hard prediction. This is just what I think it would be based on what's happening now, even though trying to look ahead a couple of years, a lot could change. So having said all that, let's get started in Alaska, typically a red state, and I will have it as safe for DeSantis, Hawaii. That's going to be safe for Biden. Let's go west coast to east, Washington, Oregon, and California. Those will be safe for Biden. Would DeSantis do better than Trump in some of those states? Probably, but not enough to get it under 10. How about Nevada? This is a state that's trending toward the right. Probably a little bit slowly, though. It's not a sure thing. And I spent some time thinking about this, and I'm really not sure. I think that Biden being an incumbent might keep it out of Republican hands one more time. But then again, that's when that national environment comes into play. Slightly red environment. Biden is going to lose Nevada. Try to keep it as mostly a neutral environment. And I've got Biden on the incumbency advantage, and I have it as a tilt for Biden. But that is a very low confidence rating. Idaho and Utah are safe for DeSantis. How about Arizona? This has basically been a red state up until maybe the very recent cycle or two. Could DeSantis do better than Trump did in 2020 and put it back in the Republican column? The Biden incumbency could get in the way. However, I'm going to say DeSantis will have enough appeal in those red Trump counties, in some of the suburbs, around Maricopa County. I don't think they're going to be as against DeSantis as they were with Trump. Now, some of them... They're just done with the Republicans. I understand that. But this would be a close state. Seems to be drifting toward the left. And it really could go either way. But I ended up settling on a tilt for DeSantis. Montana, Wyoming, safe for DeSantis. Colorado, that will get under 10 points, likely, for Biden. How about New Mexico? That I'm not positive of. I think it would be just over 5 points, likely, for Joe Biden. North and South Dakota, safe for DeSantis. Nebraska at large, safe for DeSantis. The second district, that is the blue trending district. It got a little bit redder after redistricting, but they did vote for Joe Biden last time. They voted for Donald Trump previously in 2016. It's not a complete lost cause for the Republicans. It's possible in the right environment, DeSantis would win it. But to cover myself, I have it as a lean for Joe Biden. Kansas, safe for DeSantis. Oklahoma, safe for DeSantis. How about in Texas? That will be likely for DeSantis. I don't think much needs to be said here. DeSantis is not going to be as revolting to some of the blue trending suburbs around Austin, around Dallas, Houston. And I think the turnout in the red rural counties would still be strong for DeSantis. And he would win this by anywhere from six to nine points. Minnesota, tough call. I have it as a low likely, probably five and a half to six points for Joe Biden. Iowa, that will be mid to high single digits, likely for DeSantis. Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, safe for DeSantis. How about Wisconsin? This state, another one that's probably trending a little bit toward the right over time. We know it went for Trump in 16. We know Biden won it nearly in 20. A lot of things could tilt the scales here one way or the other. I settled on a tilt for Ron DeSantis. Illinois, safe for Joe Biden. Low double digits in Illinois. How about Michigan? These Rust Belt states are definitely a tough call. I think Biden is a little bit stronger here than some other Democrats. I don't think Michigan would want to throw out Biden unless, of course, he's plagued with scandals and there's a really bad environment and bad economy. That's all possible, so I'm open to changing this, but for right now I have it as about 
a one to three point win lean for Joe Biden. Indiana, safe for DeSantis. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, safe for DeSantis. How about Florida? Ron DeSantis' is home state. Well, I don't think there's any question he would win the state. The only question would be what would the margin be? The state has taken a few steps toward the right. The presidential level, I don't think DeSantis would win this by double digits. I would be very stunned if that happened. I do have it as a likely for DeSantis, probably mid-single digits, five, maybe up to seven points. Let's go one state north of Florida to Georgia. This is a state that's been giving Republicans a lot of trouble as of the last few years. Those Atlanta suburbs, they're really going toward the Democrats. I think Joe Biden would be strong there but probably slightly less strong than he was against Donald Trump. Now, it would be four years later, so even though some of those voters would continue to drift toward the Democrats, just enough of them would come back combined with the red rural counties, and I think DeSantis would carry Georgia by a tilt margin, but it would be very close. South Carolina, over 10 points safe for DeSantis. North Carolina, that'll be lean for DeSantis. How about Ohio? That's pretty much an easy call, likely, for DeSantis. I don't think it would hit 10 points, and I do not think it would get under 5 points. Let's do West Virginia. That is a very red state, safe for DeSantis. Let's go up to the northeast into Maine. At large, tough call. I have it as borderline lean, likely, likely for Joe Biden. The first district, that's a blue district, safe for Biden. The second district, that's the redder district. Trump has won this district, and it's become a district Republicans are able to carry without a lot of effort anymore. I do think it would be likely for Ron DeSantis. Not totally sure of the margin, so I left it at likely. How about in neighboring New Hampshire? This is a state that seems to mostly be out of reach for the Republicans. Biden being the incumbent, I think that would be enough for him to hold on to it. I think DeSantis would do better than Donald Trump did in 2020, but I do have Biden winning by a lean margin. Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. All safe for Joe Biden. A lot of those margins would be reduced a little bit in these states from the blowouts Donald Trump suffered in 2020. But I think the safe bet is to keep them all at safe margins for Biden. Again, if Biden was struggling badly and it was a red environment, it's possible a state like New Jersey could get under 10 points. Let's go to Pennsylvania. This is a state Biden has some ties to. It's pretty much a swing state, although Republicans do seem to struggle here more on a statewide level. I wasn't sure what to do here. I gave Biden the incumbency advantage, and I have it as a tilt for Biden. The last state is Virginia, and that will be somewhere between 5 and 8 points, likely for Joe Biden. Those D.C. suburbs, they would be all in on Joe Biden. The red Republican Trump type of counties, they would go big for DeSantis, but it would not be enough to make it super close in Virginia. And that is my map, and that would result in 272 electoral votes for Ron DeSantis, 266 for Joe Biden. This is extremely close. As I've said, anything could sway this map in the other direction. A lot of these margins are only within one or two points, so everything would come down to the environment, the running mates, scandals, and even the media, which I do think the media would be much more friendly to Joe Biden. There would be little chance of much favorable coverage for Ron DeSantis. I think it would be a battle for the working class vote. Some of them, I think, are going to stick with Joe Biden as he's the incumbent. Some, I think, are culturally done with the Democrats, and they want to go for someone like Ron DeSantis. So you could make a case to flip Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, Pennsylvania. I don't think anybody would doubt this would be a very close election. In a couple of months or a year, could be a different map. But for right now, this is what I settled on. It'd be really fascinating to see what the turnout is in a lot of these states, what the trends are in the suburbs, what happens down in South Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. There's a lot of different storylines that would be very interesting to follow. And there's some different routes you could take on this map. Let me know in the comments, do you mostly agree with this map or do you somehow disagree with a whole lot of these states? Let me know down below and on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.